Nice. I love it. All right, we have a listener question here today coming from Brian Hero. I think it's a really good question. He says, in what ways are you supposed to imitate Christ? Or in what ways are we supposed to imitate Christ? Uh, who wants to tackle that one first from Brian? Well, I'll, uh, I'll jump in first just because I got to cheat. Brian and I actually are good friends. And he had sent this in, I think, a couple months ago. But then he and I had a chance to catch up on the phone um, last week. And so we talked a little bit about this. So I'll share just a little bit of what we had uh, talked about there. And then we'd love to get your guys' thoughts too. Um, first, I think for people who do appreciate that we're supposed to walk in the footsteps of Jesus, a lot of times we default to the character of Jesus. So Jesus was kind, Jesus was loving, Jesus was gentle. And I, I totally agree with that. I, I do think we're supposed to follow in the footsteps of Jesus in terms of of his character as a person. He was, he was a good, upright, righteous man, and we should be striving to imitate him in that sense. But there were a few other things that sometimes I know in my own life I've overlooked, you guys, and um, three that came to mind were uh, first his perspective. Uh, as I read the Gospels, I'm always struck that Jesus, he, he didn't get caught up in the things that we tend to get caught up. And so um, he had a much broader perspective of life, time, uh, his purpose on earth. And I would just kind of summarize that in that you know, Jesus had an eternal perspective. And so I think that's a challenge for us that we tend to think very in the moment. We think things of this earth. And one way that we should be striving to imitate Jesus is his uh, perspective. And then a second, I think, was his attitude. And I think of that verse in Philippians 2, where it says, um, have the same attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus. Um, <clears throat> so, and it, it had to do specifically with his willingness to submit to the Father, that he, he did not consider himself above obedience, but he humbled himself, he took on the form of a human, and he became obedient even unto death. So I think um, an attitude of submission and being a servant was a second way. And the last thing was his mission. And this is probably the one that gets missed the most, I think, by believers because you know, Jesus said it is finished when he was on the cross. And so in that sense, his, his mission of dying as the Lamb of God was finished. But his mission of spreading the message that God had sent him to the earth to spread, that's one that he passed on to his disciples. And that's why the Great Commission is so important to go therefore and make disciples of all nations. That mission is still ongoing. Jesus said to do that until the end of the age. And so I think uh, his perspective, um, you know, having a, an eternal perspective, his attitude of submission and servanthood, and then his mission that he was on mission for God to uh, reconnect others to him are three ways that um, you know I want to imitate Jesus. And I know that that's like really packaged, but that's because I, I gotta have a, a conversation with oh Brian. <laughs> so before I throw it to you guys, I think part of what Brian was getting at was, well, obviously Jesus was a Jewish man in a Jewish culture 2000 years ago, he wore sandals, he didn't have social media. So like I kind of laid out three very broad ways that we can imitate Jesus, but I guess how extreme do we take it? You know, Jesus didn't write a book. He didn't start a seminary. Uh, so like we're doing stuff online. We're not really imitating Jesus in those specific ways. So where's the line between following him in a general way and following his specific actions? What do you guys think? You want to go first? Yeah, I can go first. Uh, Andrew just updated the question on us and uh, <laughs> added yeah. another layer to it. Well, and he already the answered the first one, so it was like, well, let's have a different question. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, in what ways are we supposed to imitate Jesus? I think a big thing that came to mind to me is uh, being able to relate to people. Uh, I don't know how Jesus pulled it off, but each individual he uh interacted with that we have recorded he was able to connect and relate with them in a way that drew them out you know so uh, I don't know if it was just asking the right question trick questions or asking uh, piercing questions but Jesus was a master at it he always uh 
he always had a, a way of, you know, drawing people out. So I want to get better at, you know, being timely with my words, asking the right questions, being able to relate to people. Uh, he, it seemed like he used like everyday things. I know we talk a lot about making disciples in everyday places of life, but yeah, he used every, you know, you see that, uh, that tree over there, you, you see this mountain right here and go call your husband, you know, how did he know that? Like, how did he, uh, how did he know like right where that button was to press it? Um, so yeah, I don't, I'm not, I want to keep growing and being like Jesus in that way to ask the right questions to really get people to, to draw themselves out. So, because we do want them to come to him eventually. And a part of that is being able to relate to them and see, help them see their need for him. Uh, and to do that, I think we got to be tactical like Jesus. So asking good questions is mine. Mm, that's a good one. And I think Andrew, to kind of go back to what you were asking there at the end, um, because we live in a different culture, like completely different. I mean, for one, we're not in a Jewish culture. So there was um, definitely a lot going on in that environment. I mean, a different time, a, just literally everything. And so I think the way you guys both responded is you're picking out the qualities of who Jesus was um, and how can we then put those into our modern world? So what I was hearing from you were several things that I'd written down as well. So one is that he 100% knew his identity in, in the father. Like he just got it like 100%. But that was also because he was God too. So that helped. But for us, I think we do need to make that a really high priority for ourselves. Do we know our identity in Christ? And I think that's an ongoing thing. I think we're always learning that, but continually bringing that back um, in our relationship with God and continuing to ask him about who we are in Christ Jesus is really helpful in what we're going to do and how we're going to interact with others. And then he was very, very missional. And I think this can be hard too, because I'm like, man, he had just this very specific mission laid out for him. And I don't feel like my mission is that specific, right? And so I think that brings me back to the Great Commission, which is kind of our very specific mission that we've been given. And how can we just be so tied into it that we don't get distracted? Um, and so I agree with you, Keith, and that these are things that I feel like all need work, but that we can really spend a lifetime trying to be like Jesus in these ways. And I love the asking questions um, thing because, man, he really did just know how to like just get into the heart of an issue. Um, mm -hmm. a terrible question asker. But I think the last one is his prayer life was just rock star. And that's going to come up um, later in this episode too, Keith. So I won't go into it too much here. But I think that just the way uh, Jesus did really work hard to stay um, tied in with the father, um, was, is, is key to who he was and who, and like how his ministry played out. So I think those are the areas that we can imitate in our modern world. Um, and I, I think it's going to look different, obviously, <laughs> but, um, those are things that if we, I think just really strive for, um, and probably for the rest of our lives, then we're on the right track. Yeah. I would say one, one resource that folks want to dig deeper into this, and we've got this on the website, intotheharvest.org. Um, the book is called Master Plan of Evangelism by Robert Coleman. And some of you who are watching or listening, you've, you're familiar with that book, but others you may not have uh, checked it out. I would highly recommend it. it. It highlights eight principles from the life of Jesus that carry over into modern times. And so We've also got a study guide on there that's for, that's free, so you can download that and uh, work through that with the book. And um, hopefully that'll help you guys dig deeper into this this topic that Brian asked. Yeah, great question, Brian. Yeah, Andrew, just want you guys to check out the new website because uh, we've been doing a lot of work on that. So please go check it out. And uh, we right. love getting questions. We really do. So if you if you're listening and anything comes to mind and you want us to try to tackle it, uh, send us a message on Facebook or. Uh, message us on Instagram or send us an email at info, info at info, into the harvest.org. It's always a mouthful trying to get that out. <laughs> but yeah, send us your questions, please.